From the blockbuster film comes the number one soundtrack. Howard Stern, Private Parts, the album. New music, classic tracks, and more. Howard Stern, Private Parts, the album. Available everywhere. We don't just... So have you guys been hanging together? Like, Ozzy, have you been getting tired no, of Marilyn Manson? No, it's the first, first time, time we actually met this Oh, morning. really? So you guys have never played together yet? I got yet. back from St. Louis at 4 o'clock this morning. Oh, I didn't realize that. So was Ozzy... A, were you a fan of Ozzy's growing up? Oh, yeah. I, well, I went to a Christian school. Yeah. And uh, the first I heard of Ozzy was... Uh, the, you know, they had these big seminars on that on every Friday. It was right. called Chapel, which, right. which, which, little side note, when everybody was praying, I used to steal money out of girls' purses. So that was my first. Okay. God, you know what? You are Satan. <laughs> you really are. But they, but they, they kicked into the whole seminar with playing the albums backwards and stuff. And, and Black Sabbath was one of the records that they had singled out. So it was immediately interested me. And because I wasn't supposed to listen to it. And then I started, you know, loved Black Sabbath. So you had nuns actually introduce you to Black Sabbath? No, they weren't nuns because it was a Christian school. It wasn't oh. Catholic. Oh, I see. So, like, they would sit there and go, okay, here's some records you shouldn't listen to. That's how I got if into it drugs. Yeah, it wouldn't have been for them. <clears throat> you know how That's I got true. into drugs? I was in uh, junior high, and uh, I went to this uh, messed up junior high school. And all the kids were doing experimenting with drugs. And they were real young and everything. I didn't know anything about drugs. So a cop comes to the school, my health class, and he holds up a big... Like like a giant wooden box filled with every drug, prescription drugs, illegal drugs, heroin, coke pills, quaaludes, everything, you name it, in this box. And he sat there and he said, look, man, he goes, this pill will make you feel drunk without even drinking. This, this will do a terrible, this thing will make you hallucinate and see visions. And I'm listening to all of this. Look at how fascinated Ozzy is. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Ozzy <laughs> salivating. Where's that box? Where's that box? box? And I'm oh, sitting yes. there. I remember that. Yeah, things. and I'm sitting there going, oh, my God. This is unbelievable. Give me the damn box. I'll take it all right now. Anything. This one will make you forget you have parents. I mean, it's unbelievable. So I went out, and I tried every one of them. I think I've tried everything in that box. Yeah, but the thing is, if, when I was a kid, if, 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 to get me to do something, tell me not to. Yeah. yeah. That's the story of every kid. Don't work. tell me not to do Especially you don't put a cop up there telling me not to do it. You know what you haven't tried, though? What? Which is the new fad that he and I are trying to start. is sea monkey powder. That you, you, It's a little powder that you add to the water and the sea monkeys grow. Yes, you remember this yes, kid? yes. One day, someone gave me a box of that stuff, and I, I opened it up, and it looked like cocaine. So I, all these people were hanging around. I'm going, here, let's try some of this. And they snorted it. It made them crazy. So it's... it's Really? That's got to be dangerous, sea snorting monkey sea powder. monkey powder. <laughs> Ozzy, you ever we done sea Bill, monkey Billy powder? Corgan, no, we made him snort. No. From Smashing Pumpkins? Yeah. He, he snorted sea monkeys? We made him. <laughs> <laughs> now he's an addict <laughs> now. <laughs> Earlier when we were snorting sea monkey powder, did you think it changed the way you felt about the film at all? <laughs> See, Corgan's a man of few words, but his head speaks for itself. You guys couldn't maintain a schedule as heavy as yours uh, and, and do that many drugs and stuff, right? I mean, you, we you could guys maintain a schedule without doing that. Really? Is that, is that true? No. no. I mean, it's... Uh, it becomes the whole thing. Is, the whole thing right. is, I've always been into the idea of, you know, I would never be want to be in a position where I had to stop, you know, mm -hmm. doing anything, drinking, sex, drugs, whatever it is. You know, I, I like to find that balance. You do things in chaos. moderation. Well, not always, but I like to be able to, you know, I, I I was saying that I do drugs to know that I don't have to. Right. So. See, Robin? It's like a test. Ozzy crossed that line. Yeah. Ozzy <laughs> crossed the line. There is a line. I mean, I mean, there is a line. And I crossed it the first time I ever used it. I, 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 right. I, I didn't have a joint. I had a, there a, was a, a line bag, in, you know. Yeah, you didn't smoke just one joint. I just got white crazy. <laughs> <laughs> with us, if there's a line, we snort it. You do. Yeah. I mean, Twig, Twiggy, is that, are, you, are you down with that? Uh... Sure. <laughs> Once in a while, I'd just like to see if Twiggy's breathing. Yeah, if he's you like Twiggy? <laughs> Twiggy's, <laughs> you can see Twiggy's head. He's got this thing. Yeah, Twiggy shaved his head. That's pretty cool. People think he's wearing a wig all the time. It's crooked. I don't know. Twiggy had a long-standing relationship with Courtney. You should ask him about. Oh, is that right? Oh yes. Oh. Courtney, Courtney love you. Did her? How is she? On drugs. How could I do anybody? You did her, Twiggy? Absolutely not. See, Twiggy's all quiet over there. Yeah, he's got yeah. it going yeah. on, and he's not talking. You got cool stuff going on, man. You don't play him up on me. You got to nail him. No, no, no. You did Courtney Love? No. He did, he, 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 Marilyn did he? How could I do anybody? Marilyn did he? The sources lead me to believe if I were to shake the magic eight ball. Right. It, it would probably say definitely. See, Twiggy, I didn't know your story. I just thought maybe you were gay or something. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know. How would I know gay. what you are? I'm I don't gay. know. Are you gay? Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Are you doing uh, Marilyn? 
Mm. Not Ozzy, actually. Oh, Ozzy. Hey, I didn't know. <laughs> no, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know if you, I didn't know what, I didn't know what your scene was. Is only, man. It's sort of vague. I mean, Marilyn even makes references. I know Marilyn's not gay, but... Uh, well, that's, we, actually, I was... We're just, like, so open-minded about that stuff, you know, because it doesn't embarrass us, but... We, we have, sometimes we'll be sitting in the dress room and we're bored because you know, if you do sound check, you've got like six, seven hours. And you don't have any checks show. around, so maybe you'll do so each other. So we have this thing right. where we, we'll put rubbers on and we'll challenge each other to <laughs> each other's Well, hey, I can't say that on the radio, that, man. I'll yeah. get thrown off. All right, so in other words, what you're saying is sometimes, let me paraphrase what you just said. I had to bleep that. I'm sorry. All right, so what you're yeah, saying we gotta is. Put that we got to put that in baby language. Yeah, we got to now talk like babies. I know. All right. We put we put condoms on one another. Sometimes. And you pre and you and we you perform challenge fellatio. All right, that's better. All right, you guys, I'll uh, see you sometime, I guess. All I'll right, see you. all right. But I'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you soon. So, guys, you said in there that you owed a lot of your success to Howard. Is that true? Yes. Uh, he was an early supporter when some people were afraid of the band, and that was great. So we always remember that. So, so that means you'll always be, always come back here and help him out. All right, guys, thanks for coming. If he down. continues to give us. Jobs in the restroom. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. I want to go. Yeah, home. I, I, always, I always like to thank that. I'll talk to you Friday. Back, I'll take that. Okay. Dude, man, I can't believe just what. Shook yeah. Twiggy's hands. He was picking his nose the whole interview. I did not notice that. Going right into the men's room. Follow me and watch me. Was he really? <laughs> we got him on camera. He was picking his nose in the studio the whole interview. Get it, Twiggy. Get that camera off. Wow. That's it. Here with me now is none other than the Prince of Darkness himself, Ozzy Osbourne. And while his celebrity status has transcended that of just music, to me, he'll always be the front man of one of the most important bands to ever take the stage, Black Sabbath. Ozzy? I good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you, man. Right on. Now, remember some years ago, uh, we were all sitting at the table, and Bill Ward, your very great drummer, uh, was all glum talking about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We'll never be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No one likes Black Sabbath. I'm like, oh, come on, Bill, cheer up. He's like, no. And so now that you got recognized by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, does that make you feel any which way at all? Well, we'd be on the, on the list, but we'd never get in. And I, I, I got so pissed off of being, uh, oh, we'd be a number, we could, but, and, and first time, you get, you, go, you get all excited. Second time, you go, I wonder if we get in. Third time you go, they ain't never gonna get us. And fourth time, I just went, fuck off. Mm. Don't even put us, don't even put us in the paper. But but I, I since then it was I realised that it was unfair of me to 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 not tell tell them to stick it up their ass because it's not just me. It's three or three other guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. After. Like back in the day when Sabbath was, you know, making, you know, the, the early records, I'm sure you guys got some of the most incredible bad reviews known to man. We never, ever got a good review. Right. And you know what? If we did, we didn't like it. Because we were a people's band. We didn't, well, yeah, well, we didn't think some executives should say we were... We're well, you, you got bad reviews, but every tour sold out and because yeah. you were the, a, pe a people's band. You know, I've known, you know, I've been listening to you since I was like 13. I'm 45 now, so it's been a while. So I, you know, I kind of know you. But when the Osborne show hit, all of a sudden, middle American moms know you. Oh, you're, yeah. you're like a family item. When, you know, everyone kind of knew of you before, but now it's, it's this, it, it was a, quite a phenomenon. I mean, and how did your life change? TV is a completely different animal to what I'm used to, rock and roll. Yeah. All, I mean, it was just it was just like being fired up in the air by the biggest cannon in the world. Saying what you said about, about the middle of America could recognise me. I was in Boston. And this woman, this very conservative woman, stops and she goes, because oh, there's a lot of foul language on this show, so they, they, they think they've got, to t they've got to talk to me, like, fuck this and yeah. all that. You know? <laughs> so she goes, Ozzy fucking Osborne. I go, yeah. <laughs> She says, what are you doing in Boston? I go, a show. I'm thinking she's fucking mad, you know. I go, I'm doing a show. And she, and she goes, a show? What kind of a show? I'm thinking, is the fucking Twilight Zone or what? And she goes, oh, a rock and roll show. She goes, oh, you do that as well? And I go, what? Yeah, see, that's, that's the crossover. There's people who don't know about the music. Uh, 
There's a thing I, I wanted to ask you about, because, you know, you have firsthand knowledge. I've been to a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. I've played a lot of shows. Your shows, the re audience reaction, it's a phenomenon in itself. Mm -hmm. I have never seen anything like that in my life. Usually when a band comes out and plays the first song, the, the crowd goes ape shit, And then they settle down and they kind of get into the thing. At your shows, they never lose that volume from the first song, where by the 10th song, you're like, you wonder if they're going to wear themselves out. It's, it's, a, it's I have to get this. I have to get this feeling of the audience. It's kind of like the more they get into it, the more we get into it. Yeah. I've no, it's I've, just giving them a good time. I mean, when we write a song, first of all, we write it for ourselves. And if you like it, that's a bonus. And so when you've got a, an arena with 25,000 people who like that song, it make, it's, you, there ain't a feeling, there ain't no sex, drugs, or anything like that. When you have that buzz off the crowd. I mean, that's what keeps you going, you know. I, I wouldn't have all this crap on me if people didn't buy my tickets or my albums. Yeah. So I, I, I don't come from a, a, a wealthy background. I was fucking odd job man, you know. And I, I had a dream and it came true and more, you know. I mean, I, it's like one big show. And when I can't deliver, I am pissed, man. Yeah. Well, that being said, do you ever see yourself slowing down? Or could you, could you ever see, like, well, the idea of retirement? I just uh, I can't I mean, see you I mean, ever doing that. I always, I, I, you know, people have asked me, I've tried retirement. But one thing I've learned from about if you retire, you've got to have something to retire to. Yeah. If you want to paint, bicycle ride, whatever, You've got to have some, because oh, my, my, my father retired. He said, I've always wanted to dig the garden. He dug the garden and died. You know, I mean, it, 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 I think it's what keeps us going, you know. I mean, I, mean, I, I, mean, I should be dead a thousand times. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I don't, I, mean, I just get up and carry on, you know. At this point, looking back, after what you've been through, which has been a lot. Do you consider yourself a survivor? I think I'm living on borrowed time because, I, I mean, I'm either the luckiest man that walk, walks the earth or I, I've always said that when I go, it's going to be something stupid. Like I'm going to trip up and break my neck on a, on a mat on the floor. Or something. I remember, you know, in the 80s, you know, you'd see these reports about you. Oh. Yeah, and I, you're like, I'm saying, damn, I, I, I hope he survives himself. I mean, I was on a, I mean, the, 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 the one tour that I thought I, I'll never forget was the Motley Crue, Crue, Motley Crue tour. Right. I mean, every night something was going on. I mean, somebody was, I remember going to New Orleans and it was mayhem, fights and everything, man, you know. And I wake up and I, and I wake up, where am I? I don't know where I am. So I'm feeding around in the dark, and there's a, there's a, there's a car. I go, oh, I've got to take that leak. I'll flop him out, and I, I, I'll pee up this car. And the window, <laughs> the window winds down, and this police woman goes, oh, when, you're, when you finish shaking that thing, your ass is going to jail. <laughs> so I spent the night in jail with two uh, African-American guys eating, eating peanut butter sandwiches and crap coffee, you know. Oh, man. There's a you know, one, of, one of my favorite Aussie stories. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, but there's the, the you, you fell asleep in the wrong hotel room. Oh yeah, that's so great. I mean, that that's like. But when, when you're touring in them uh, Regency High days. Oh, I know. I get lost in the hallway. You know, I have to. Run. I, I never would dip my. I'd have a pocket full of keys. You know? Yeah. So I'll get to the hotel, and it was like f fifteen oh five, and I remember the last hotel was five oh five. I got out the elevator. Went around, got 15 on five, and the, the maid was just cleaning up. So I go, I go in, lie on the bed, I'm coyote. I, I wake up, everything seems weird, and I'm going, what's, what's, what's wrong? So I pick up the phone, I go, excuse me, operator, but what time is it? She goes, 6.30. I go, oh, okay, that sounds weird. So I phone about, and I go, 6.30, at night or in the morning, she said in the morning, and I'm like, going, shit, I slept through the gig, and, that, and the band never spoke to me for about a month. And we had to go back and do it. I mean, Van Halen were touring with us. Oh, that was, they were opening. But, I mean, they yeah. smashed the fucking gig up. Oh, man. 
Well, well. I mean, there's a million of them. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's legendary. Yeah, you, you, there has to be times when you just sit still for a moment and just... Do you know the honest truth? I have a problem remembering a lot. I mean, there's so many comes up Maybe that's a good thing. All in all, I've done some stupid, bad things, and I've done some pretty okay things. But I've had a great time along the way, I mean, considering where I come from. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, but the, the thing that I'm more than anything I'm proud of, Black Sabbath wasn't a band that you got a guy from Newcastle, a guy from London, and a guy from Birmingham, and it was constructed... We were four local guys that went. I went to the same school as Tony, and we conquered the fucking world. Yeah. Well, right on. Thanks for coming to visit me on my show. You got up, uh, man. I love. I loved being interviewed by you. Right on. All Take right, care. brother. See you. Bye bye. All right. <laughs>